Hi everybody, my name is Forrest Stevens and for the past 10 months I have been slowly converting this soccer mom minivan into a camper. So come check it out. it it had had just like a really simple camper conversion done to it just a, a simple bed frame but I took that out and I took out actually all the plastic molding and carpeted kind of velvety stuff that uh, all these minivans have took that all out and insulated it from the ground up so I have an inch of foam on the floor and uh, Reflectix as well and then Reflectix because it's so malleable and I'm working with a minivan that doesn't have any 90 degree angles in it it's all rounded I decided to kind of keep that concept in mind and make everything um, even the finishing stuff malleable so that I could really form fit it and get the most space I could out of this uh, minivan so Reflectix for insulation a uh, little bit of spray foam here and there in cracks and then uh, the burlap to finish it off which is once again malleable the ceiling i have half inch of foam and then i have a radiant barrier on that half inch and an air gap and then suspended is reflectix so that air gap um, the radiant barrier insulation of the reflectix and the the lining up there is creating really really good insulation in the roof so that really helps in the winter and in the summer um, right now i have the bed um, turned into a couch you know, I built this really low to the ground and um, that's just to give you more headroom so you don't feel like you're in a cave. Uh, somebody could lift this up a little bit and have storage underneath. So this offers like very little storage as is right now, um, but it's very comfortable. You can sit and here you can um, have access to the kitchen, which I'll show you guys in a second. Um, this bed frame is kind of a unique build. This actually uh, folds out or slides out I guess um, onto the flooring here which once again malleable thin this is just the uh, astroturf I got online um, this will fold out and I'll show you guys that right now so I just took the bed out just to show you guys kind of the actual build a little bit more so it's not covered with a mattress um, this is just a simple interlocking thing here and you just slide that out and then you have a, a three foot frame here uh, and it folds into just over two feet if, when it's a couch three feet when it's like this and it fits my mattress perfectly um, and then I bolted it just with a bent uh, strong tie right to the frame so that when you pull this out this whole frame doesn't just wiggle around on the ground and then it's uh, over there as well it's it's actually stuck to the ground a lot of people make these but they make them actually um, just too tight and then they don't come in and out whenever uh, there's any moisture in the air they the wood will uh, expand and then you can't get them in and out so this was an easy way to do that um, we'll move on to the kitchen here so yeah this is my kitchen build it's really simple it's a piece of driftwood that I started with and I bolted that directly into the frame using uh, these L brackets um, so there's three L brackets bolted directly into the frame and then also um, this that's actually supported right on the ground and then uh, everything is built up off of that so this is a nice cool piece of driftwood um, my sink setup i'll show you that first this is just a collapsible water jug and another bent strong tie um, i plumbed this all in this whole sink setup cost me maybe 15 dollars. a lot of stuff came from the dollar store um, this drain here is all built up and then you just uh, there you go, so gravity fed water, no need for electricity, no need for a pump. It all flows down here through this pipe and into the gray water bucket, which you can just empty out after. Coming into here, I just uh, built off of this with L brackets again, just another shelf underneath and things get a little jangly when, uh, when you're moving. So I got this string to hold everything in, uh, utensils in here and then you close that. Um, obviously we're just working with really small space so I only have really basics in here some rice some um, some oats and then this would be all my cooking dishes we got a pan we got a, uh, a pot and then just a couple bowls in there 
So this is the stove that I use. It's just a simple butane stove. I made it um, just far enough away so that I could have access to the pans. They just take these guys. Really simple setup. Um, and I leave the trunk open and the side doors open when I use it inside here because uh, I don't have a ceiling vent. Just clip it down. And then I just bolted it with a couple of uh, tiny little pieces of metal directly to this. So it's just ever present. You could expand on it. You could put a little rail and have like a dish towel. Um, this just gets tucked away when you're driving. Just sits in there. And then I got this guy. This is kind of cool. Um, using just GoPro parts and this $200 little Magnasonic um, pocket projector, uh, HDMI cord. Up here, I just bolted directly into the frame. Let's see if this works here. Uh, which way does it go? This way, yeah. Boom. And so that's a projector. So you just hook up your, you can hook up your computer. I've hooked up my computer. I've hooked up um, my PlayStation to it. And it has a battery built in and this thing actually folds down and you can see this side's white and uh, it acts as the projector screen. So this is actually part of the kitchen as well. And it's also, I guess, a bit of a desk. Um, this just sits like this when you're driving and it doesn't move around like at all, uh, even though it kind of looks a little janky. Um, you just undo that, you undo this and then it folds out. And up here, I've just bolted this uh, rope and it's actually, um, I actually twist it as well to give it a lot more strength. And then you just go over there, get it as level as you need it. Do just do like a simple knot. And we've, you know, we've cooked on here. I've had my laptop on here, fully supports it. Um, and this is just, you, you really need to think about simple solutions um, if you're on a budget. And you also just need to use your space as wisely as possible. So over here with these hinges, they're bolted directly to um, some metal on the back door here. And then it uh, hinges out and then there's some hinges in the middle. Um, so you can just kind of make it as small and flat as possible. Um, so yeah, if you're in the kitchen, you know, you're cooking here, you're prepping here, or if you are, you know, in couch mode, once the mattress is on here, it's a lot more comfortable. Um, you have your little desk, you know, enough space for a mouse and your laptop, and then you can just fold it away when you're done. And it takes two seconds. Maybe a little bit more than two seconds. Let's not get too literal, guys. So at the end of the bed frame here, I built just a small cabinet and just a small latch. And I use this van a lot for filmmaking and traveling just solo or uh, my partner and I, we go on small trips and this just fills full of our clothes and under here I'll put my camera gear and it's kind of tucked away. You know, it's not really like, it's not a safe or anything, but with the mattress on here and you put everything in there, at least if somebody peers through the windows, they're not going to see your expensive gear. Um, at least that's what I think. And then here I have window covers. So these are a little bit bulky and I didn't really have a good spot for them. So they just tuck back over here. Um, anyway, these are my window covers. This one's for the back one, it's the biggest. Um, half inch, this is just leftover styrofoam I had, half inch, and then uh, a little bit more. You can see I go about an inch around. So this actually fits in the window and then this overlaps the window. So it really doesn't let any light in or out. Um, and you can put this black side facing outwards. So it just looks like your windows are very, very tinted if somebody is just peering in. Um, so it, it allows you to do some stealth camping. So this guy, um, this pretty much runs my van. Uh, it's just a small 240 watt hour Jackery portable power station. Uh, right now, I, I wired my 12 volt lights so that they can run off of this just with a simple um, cigarette lighter. Um, they are also wired to the battery, the or the starter battery of my van, so you can do it two different ways. Um, and then this also has just uh, USB options and then a 200 watt pure sign inverter. This thing's been great. We've used it, um, I use it all the time when I'm doing filmmaking trips. And uh, you guys can uh, find a link for this in the description if you guys wanna see more. So heating options, we've got a couple different things going on here. Um, this is a Mr. Buddy or Mr. Heater, Little Buddy. Um, and it, you know, it. It doesn't exhaust its heat, so it's meant for outdoor. A lot of people use these for indoor. 
um, and it's okay you just have to vent it out like the main thing that you need to worry about is actually the fact that there's a flame in there and it's burning oxygen so if you don't have enough oxygen you die so <laughs> you gotta make sure to uh, have fresh air coming in um, I have a, a, a carbon monoxide detector and a smoke detector actually in here um, the other thing that I do all the time is I actually left this heater in. This is a heater that's controlled at the front and it just pumps hot air from the heat exchanger in the vehicle. And um, when you're driving around before you go to bed or whatever and you're driving to your spot, you just pump some heat out. It also pumps out down here so it heats up underneath your mattress. It's quite nice. Um, these are a couple different uh, wood stoves I got. This is the Cubic Mini grizzly and it's heavy uh, and this you can tell that neither of these wood stoves are actually installed um, but they're both options that I considered to putting in here I really wanted to make this van really crazy I wanted to do things that people had never done before um, I wanted to put a wood stove in here but uh, time has actually not permitted me uh, I've had the uh, jigsaw out a couple times on the roof and haven't cut a hole so um, anyway this is a great little wood stove um, you know it's kind of the cream of the crop when it comes to these kind of mini stoves uh, it's got everything you need all the bells and whistles ceramic tile heat exchanger uh, night it looks nice it looks beautiful and then uh, um, yeah, and you can uh, find a link in the description as well I'll put that in there and I'll put an, a link for this one as well this is the um, tiny woodsman stove it's a lot more simple of a build it actually allows for a bigger flame inside because it doesn't have the ceramic tile so it's just you can tell it's just these um this uh however thick steel right it's just steel paneling this guy has just uh, welded it all together um, but it has a tight seal you know and uh, allows air in and out bigger flame way cheaper cost than the cubic mini so if you want to shave a couple hundred dollars off and get one of these that's a good option as well almost everything everything except for really the insulation is recycled or reclaimed from my previous build that was in here when i bought it um, the pallet wood for the the bed frame um, and driftwood for that and just a couple little things i had to buy but um, i just wanted to make like a really cheap build and that's super super functional this would be perfect for one person to live in and save some rent it would also be perfect for somebody to just um, do some camping trips with it's it's a really simple smart layout in a small van like this i haven't been living in this van i've been using it to go make films uh, i'm a filmmaker i actually own different media which is where this is being posted and i use this van to travel and find other people living alternative lifestyles and I just really wasn't able to do that in a car and I'd had vans in the past that I'd lived in and with those vans I never really did the build that I wanted to do and so this was my attempt at doing the build that I wanted to do I really wanted to do a lot of these space saving techniques that I implemented in this build a lot of it didn't come together because of um, just how much everything costs to do that like a nice finishing touches and all that it's also a timing thing as well for me uh, it's just it's been 10 months that I've had this van and, I, and I've and i been putting things off and it's taking me longer to do stuff. I never really got to the stage that I wanted it to be, but for me, this is finished as much as it's going to be um, because this has also been a stepping stone for me and my partner to get back into van life after a couple years of not doing it that means getting something bigger because this isn't uh, this isn't well set up enough this isn't truly this just isn't possible with two people um, with as much hobbies as we have and um, us needing uh, space this would this would be perfect for I think one minimalist um, but uh, it would be tight for two people we do it for camping but I don't think we would want to live in it long term um, but this will be perfect for somebody uh, when I get rid of it and we can move on to our next camper build which is um, we're gonna buy a Toyota based motorhome hopefully fingers crossed uh, we're going to look at it tomorrow um, and uh, try living in it for a long time to save a lot of money on rent and continue to make a lot of awesome films that's the idea so this was just a, a stepping stone to be able to get to another stepping stone which will get us further and further on our goals and and through our life I think when a lot of people think about minivans they really just think oh you can maybe take the seats out and put something on the floor do a simple raised bed 
they just don't think that it's as serious in the van life community. And this was also my attempt at just kind of showing what is possible. Um, there's a few people doing really, really cool things with minivans on YouTube. Foresty Forest is one of them. You guys should check him out. He's uh, got a really awesome converted minivan. And this was just kind of my West Coast-ish type inspired attempt at, at doing a similar type of uh, functional build. I think it's really cool to work within limitations and I think a minivan is super limited. It's um, seven and a half feet by four feet and then you're, you've got all this wiggle room on the sides around the wheel wells and by the doors and uh, on the roof and what, you know, what can you do with something this small? Um, and this was what I did. The kind of advice I would give to somebody that's thinking about van life is to consider a minivan actually um, because it's so cheap it's cheaper on gas they're cheaper to buy um, they're undesirable to other van dwellers if you could live in something this small you can pay for it by one or two months worth of rent uh, that's how much it costs to buy something like this and to convert it what advice would i offer once you get into the build is to think about doing a lot of reclaim stuff um, just budget out as much as you can you're saving on your initial buy, but you also have to convert it yourself. A lot of you can also buy a lot of these old camper vans or motorhomes. Um, but you can, you know, it's always a bit of a trade-off. You can get a minivan that is in mechanically good shape, or you can get an old motorhome that's going to break down all the time. So just pick your battles and, and decide what's right for you. I think a minivan is a really clever idea for somebody on a budget that wants to travel, that wants to live simply, um, and just. Uh, be minimal really my personal philosophy on life is um <laughs> that's a question i ask literally everybody i interview and it's uh it's a hard question i think it's ever changing i think I'll, i i a lot of times i'll come up with ideas that i really like and they'll resonate with my life at the time as a as a human i think it's really important to figure out what you want to do in this life figure out kind of what kind of footprint you want to make and turn that into a goal and then actively pursue that goal to provide purpose in your life. Um, I know the happiest and most fulfilled I feel is when I have a purpose and I'm actively going towards that. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm happy every single day. It means that I'm challenged every single day and that sometimes I can face those challenges and overcome them and that provides a, a much greater life feeling than um, than short-term happiness ever would. My philosophy, I always try to kind of narrow it down to the basic, this can apply to everybody, and I think that can sort of apply to anybody. I think if everybody's doing exactly what they want to do in life, and not in a selfish way, but in a way where they feel fulfilled, I think the world would be a much better place. And I think all of these massive global problems that we're having um, are all driven by the individual. And if we can fix ourselves, the, the individual is the collective. So if we can fix ourselves, if we can work on ourselves and do exactly what we wanna do, um, you know, get over all these issues that we all have as individuals, if we can get over that, all these collective issues will um, disappear as well. So the individual is the collective and um, just work work towards your dreams. If you guys want to find more, um, like I said, I'm going to be getting rid of this, but I'll be buying a Toyota motorhome and, well, hopefully Toyota, pray to God. You can watch the entire process of me building this on my channel, which is called Forrest Stevens, the link in the description. Um, and then you guys can check out uh, this channel as well, Different Media. This is my channel. Uh, we do weekly alternative dwelling tours. I'm on Instagram at Forrest the Filmmaker. And, um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and get something out of it. There's lots of little tiny unique things that I've done. Um, yeah, and you guys get to see the whole process. So um, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next episode.